So I'm going to rewrite it down here. Did you write that down in a note? Uh huh. Yes. You don't have to write the the formula because you have it. You should have written all rewritten it down, but the, write the example down. Okay, so on our flow chart, are the first and last terms squares? Our first term is the x squared. Can we take the square root of that? What's the square root of x squared? x squared. X. So yes, so yes to that one. Our last term is the nine. Is nine a perfect square? Yes. Yeah, we just talked about that, right? The square root of nine is three. three. Okay, so yes to that. Now we go to the arrow leads us to, okay, your A equals the square root of term <coughs> one. Well, we already found that, right? The square root of the x squared is x, so we'll label him A. And we're gonna label B the square root of your, your second term that we have found, right? And that was the three, so we'll label that one B. So now we're gonna follow our flow chart down to the little diamond off to the right. And it is a question, is middle term equal to two times the A and B? So is our third term equal to two times that A and B? Okay, well let's replace the A and B. So A was X and B was three. So three times X is three X. So what is two times three X? Six X. Is that, your, is that the middle term? Yes. yes. Okay. So we answer yes to that. And then what does it tell us? Oh, you have a perfect square trinomial. Okay. And so we go back to our formula here. And we're going to use one of these. Which one are we going to use? The first one or the second one? The first one, right? Because your middle term is a plus. Right? So we are going to use this one. So we'll come over here and put that in the, the square. So what was our A again? Yes. Mm -mm. What was your A? X it was the, the X. And what was your B? Three. Three. <coughs> and we're going with the plus because it, our second term is, our middle term is plus. And there's your answer. Okay, that's a perfect trinomial square. Okay, how many terms we have? Three. Three. Are the first and last terms squares? So, yes. 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 yes, let me write them down. Okay, so what's the square root of y? Y. What? Y. What's the square root of 64? Eight. Okay, so those are perfect squares. So yes, then we go down to the next thing in our flow chart. Okay, you label A. A is the square root of your first term, and you label B as the square root of your second term. And then we're going to multiply that by 2. So that's going to be 2 times the A and B. The A and B are 8Y, right? So 2 times 8y is 6, 16y. Okay, now, so we do have a 16y as our middle term, but the 16y is actually what? Negative. Negative. So then what we would do is we would go up to our formula and see that in that case, our answer or our square is going to have the negative in it, okay? So you did get the, the value, you did get the 16y, it's negative, and so you'll show that in your answer. So let's put it over here. So put our binomial square, our a was the y, our b was the 8, and we will use the subtraction sign. So that is this one right here. So the square root of x squared would be what? X. We'll label that one A. The square root of 25 would be 5, and we label that B. So we look at our pattern. Our pattern is A minus B times 
times A plus B. And so now we just put in what our A and B are. What was the A? X. X. So that goes in the first position. And what was the B? Five. Five. That goes in the second position. Make one of them a positive and make one of them a negative. And you're done. Oh, really yeah. Okay, a 16x squared minus 9. Let's go through our flow chart. We have two terms, right? So we'll go to the left. Is there a minus sign between the terms? Yes. yes. So now we're going to take the square roots of term 1. So the square root of 16x squared would be what? 4x. 4x. And the square root of 9 would be 3. three. So remember your first term is the A and your second term is the B. So we're going to put that into our formula of A minus B times A plus B. So let's do that. What is our A again? 4X. 4X goes in the first position. And what is our B again? 3. Three. And make them one positive and one negative. What does your chart say with three exclamation points behind it? Always check for greatest common factor. What do we have in this one? A 3x. A 3x. Oh, weird. No, not for, we can't take out, we can only take oh. out the lowest bound. All right, so what's that going to leave us inside? 3x squared divided by 3x? Uh, squared. No. X squared. X squared. X squared. 3x three, three squared divided by 3x. X. 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 18 divided by 3x. <coughs> or No, sorry. 18x divided by 3x. 6. Okay. We want to find the zeros, so we're going to set this equal to 0. Remember, that's your y, right? So we're going to set that equal to 0. What am I going to do? I don't have two binomials. But do I still have two factors? Yes. I still have two factors though, right? What's yes. being multiplied by what on here? Six. What's being multiplied by what? Three X. Three X is still multiplying the oh, so X plus it. six, right? They're still being multiplied. So I'm still gonna split them up, right? Yeah. So I'm still gonna split them up. So I'm still gonna have three X equal to zero and the X plus six equal to zero. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. So let's solve the first one. 3x equal to 0. How would we solve that for x? Divide by 3. So x would be 0 divided by 3 is 0 divided by 3 is 0. And then our x plus 6 equal to 0. x would equal a what? Negative 6. Okay, so you saw what was missing here was there was no C, right? Yes. So we could really just put in there plus zero, could we not? Oh, so where funny. is, where are the two x-intercepts for this one? Where and where? At zero, which is right here, and at negative six. So here's what's happening. It is positive, so it's opening up. So he's doing this. He's coming in some going down and coming back up. So where? what's the y-intercept on this one? Zero. Zero. And look at, your, look at your original quadratic. The c was gone, right, because the c was zero. So that's another little clue on how, how we're going to graph these. Okay? Yes? 